I'm John McPeak and you are watching Community Focus, presented by the Friends of MCTV. In this third and final segment, our guests are Gary Scorey, the director of the Midland County Historical Society, and Scott Seeberger, the chair of the advisory board of the society. Gentlemen, welcome to Focus. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Scott, what's the news from the advisory board and the volunteers at the Midland County Historical Society? I think there's a new energy. Uh, in 2008, 2009, uh, all the arts, many organizations, went through a pretty tough recession, and we got hit hard. We, weren't, we couldn't keep our doors, doors open. Now, thanks to a new agreement with Northwood University, they're sharing the Doan History Center with us, and this has allowed us to be open. We're open five days a week, Monday through Friday, nine to five, but we're also open Sunday till, or Saturday till 2 p.m. So this has made a big difference. We've got people coming through the doors, they're looking at our exhibits, they're coming to our programs, and it's a good time for us. Oh, that's since October of this year is when uh, that uh, yeah, uh, yes. sharing space started? October 1st. Mm -hmm. And the Midland County Historical Society is a member group of the Midland Center for the Arts? That's correct. So you operate under that umbrella? Correct. And, and uh, uh, tickets and uh, entry fees and so on can be purchased through the Center for the Arts sure. as, as well as at yeah. the door when that's you have events? The box office and things, sure. So you, you're getting more use. Is there a charge to, to, uh, to come to the uh, center or to use the research library? The Doan History Center is open to the public for free, no charge. Mm -hmm. uh, the other buildings have a nominal charge on the third weekend of the month. And you have permanent and uh, rotating exhibits or permanent and... Uh... Yes, the Doan History Center has the Arbery Gallery, which is mm -hmm. a permanent local history gallery for Midland County. We also have a small gallery that talks about different theme thematic exhibits. Right now we have a Civil War exhibit on. And that will be on for how long? Here? Through May 31st. Of uh, 2015. Yep. And then you have plans, I'm sure, for the, the ones following that. Yeah, we'll have two or three exhibits a year after that. Uh, tell us about the research library, a little bit more about that, how that's used and what's available for folks. Well, Scott alluded to our increased hours. We also have increased hours for our library. The research library is really all the two-dimensional things, all of our diaries, books, uh, photographs. We have a lot of researchers coming in doing family history, legal questions, history of their houses. And so now our research library is open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 1 to 4, and other times by appointment. So our, our upsurge of hours is good all the way around. We're very happy. Is the research library also where volunteers do a lot of the, um, the archive, the research for the society itself? Boy, volunteers do everything for us. They work in the library, they help with exhibits, they help with research, they help with decorating the houses, everything. So if there's a volunteer need out there, we have it, and if there's a volunteer, we need it. So mm -hmm. need him or her. When you go to mount an exhibit, you have a lot of, of um, items and uh, archives to go through to, uh, to glean the information in the exhibits. Is that, uh, yes. again, a lot done by volunteers? Very much so, very much so. We have a, any exhibit we do takes about a year and a half to plan and research and build and install. And that's done by two people who are staff and are usually from 10 to 30 people who are volunteers. So we have a, a very strong need and their work is, it comes alive in the galleries. And many of those volunteers are members, are they not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the great thing about history people that belong to these kind of organizations, they're interested in the who, what, where, when, why, and how of their communities and societies. And so not only do they do all this great research work, but they're neat people to hang out with because there's no shortage of conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our volunteers have a very good time when they volunteer with us. It's a, a big family. Now, really is. the Heritage Center, is that an all-encompassing uh, term, or is that yeah. is that just what's across the rail trail? Well, Heritage Park really involves the Park. Doan History Center, the Bradley Home, the Dow Museum, and the Carriage House. The entire site is Heritage Park, but we have the Doan History Center is our flagship building, that's and that's on, open Monday through Saturday. That's the one on main, the building on yes. Main Street. Then across yes. the rail trail are the Bradley Home and the, and the Carriage yes. House. And, and those facilities are open on the third weekend of the month on the Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. We generally have themed activities going on as well on the Saturdays. Okay. Friday is a drop-in day, but Saturday has special activities, hands-on programming, good things. I That's what you call your hands-on history? Yes. 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 Yeah, in January we have one of those events, and uh, it's at the Bradley home. 
which was built in 1874, and it's like stepping back, for anyone today, it's stepping back into the 19th century. And in this particular program, it's about how you survive the winter blahs. You know, the kinds of things that Midlanders huh. did back over 100 years ago to entertain themselves in the dead of the cold. Yeah, hand games, uh, playing yeah. with the neighbors, uh, doing uh, research, all kinds yeah. of things that they did yeah. back then, we still do. Yeah. Besides yeah. putting coal on. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> Keeping warm. Keeping warm. <laughs> What's currently being exhibited in the gallery? You mentioned them, but I... Uh, the, well, we have the, a Civil War exhibit right which now. Which is in your, your main exhibit. And yes, yes. And then, of course, the local history gallery has a little bit of everything, from farming to business to personalities to school, everything. But the Arbery Gallery is open Monday, again, Monday through Saturday. The smaller gallery also is. And, and again, no charge no for No charge. That? No, a gift to the community. Mm -hmm. What other programs are coming up, Scott? Well, we have fireside chats, and the next one will be in uh, March. Floyd Andrick, uh, a board member of ours, does most of these. And these are discussions, really. They're not as much lectures, but discussions about what's, you know, Midland history. And, for instance, we uh, did, he did one recently on World War II vets from Midland, three people speaking that were over the age of 90. And he's got his program coming up in March will deal with grandparents in some way. And then there's the Heritage Speaker Series, which brings in top speakers from around the region and the state talking about topics of interest to Midland. It might be, well, we have the Civil War coming up yes. in February. That's February 19th. Yes. Civil War exhibit. No, a speaker. Wow, well, okay. Yes, yes, yes. We don't have the Civil War itself. No, no, no. I just want to make sure that that was clear. Right, we right. Have a speaker uh, that is going to be speaking on Copy yeah. on the Civil War. Al Eicher yeah. and his son David will be talking on Michigan and yeah. the Civil War. Great program. Yeah. And we've had, you know, we've talked about the Great Lakes. We had, uh, I did a talk recently on Tim McCoy, the great Western cowboy star from Saginaw. So it's a variety of topics, and they draw a really good crowd. And again, they're free for the membership and a, a just a nominal fee for people who are not members. Well, Gary, what else is on your wish list and the Society's wish list as uh, you move forward? Well, we own the Larkin House, our town founder's house. We'd like to do something with that. We're in the process now of doing some research to see what we can do with it, anything with it. We always have a new exhibit we're working on to help with research. And of course, our research library, as this big move that we had recently, we had tens of thousands of items put in boxes. Well, now ten, tens of thousands of items are coming out of boxes, and volunteers are helping with that. So we will be unpacking for many months. And we're, as you're unpacking, do you have a place to store this, which will be a lot more accessible as you go forward, so you don't have to keep opening boxes and finding the right one? Well, yes and no. All of our archives remain in the Doan History Center. Mm -hmm. We use those on a daily basis. Our three-dimensional larger items are stored off-site, but we still have the same uh, security and temperature controls out there. We just need more people to help us unpack and keep it going. So the, the items are there, but they're not in a, an easily accessible manner no, right now. So no. again, another area where volunteers could be used. Absolutely. We welcome that. Uh, educational outreach programs, you have some, you invite groups to come in there, and you also will go out and make presentations? Yes, we have hundreds and sometimes thousands of children a year coming down to our site or going into the schools to you know, teach, share with them the history of Midland and the county as well. Well, Gary, tell us again the days and hours that the Don't History Center is open and uh, where it's located. We're located at 3417 West Main, and we're uh, the hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and on Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then your website address, uh, for folks that want to know more? www.mcfta.org. And your telephone? Oh, 989-631-5930, extension 1310. Well, Gary, Scott? Appreciate you joining us you. and telling thank us about so much. the exciting new directions in which the Midland County Historical Society is heading. And thank you for joining us for the January installment of Community Focus. We've enjoyed hearing about some useful, informative, and educational activities that we can all look forward to in Midland in the, in the coming months. And remember, if your club or nonprofit organization would like to join us at this table, find our application online at MCTV section of the city website or visit MCTV in person to submit an application. We'd love to have you be a part of Community Focus.